Hello, everybody. I miss you guys and girls. Hope everybody's doing all right at home, not driving their parents too crazy, doing a whole bunch of reading and a whole bunch of playing outside, I hope. Staying clean, staying healthy. So, I remember reading the Stella Diaz book, The Beginning of the Year to Mrs. Bodendorf's class, and I remember how much everybody loved it. And then I remember Tristan always asking me when we were going to get the next one, when we were going to get the next one. So, I went and got the next one from a friend up the street who was a librarian, and she lent it to me. And since we're all kind of stuck here at home and away from school, each afternoon I'm going to read three chapters or 15 minutes, whatever comes first. And then I'll put some comprehension questions and some maybe some research opportunities in the description. And we're going to post these each day so the sec first graders can uh, spend a little time and listen to a story. And this is a story that we're all familiar with. This is the new Stella Diaz book. It's called Stella Diaz Never Gives Up. And here's the cover. Here she is with uh, some turtles because we know Stella loves marine animals. The author is Angela Dominguez. I think we can tell by the picture, right, that this is what? Fiction or nonfiction? Come on. Fiction, right? Because it's not a photograph. Hey, let me read you the inside cover. Stella gets a big surprise when her mom plans a trip to visit their family in Mexico. Stella loves marine animals, and she can't wait to see the ocean for the first time until she arrives and learns that the sea and its life forms are in danger due to pollution. Stella wants to save the ocean, but she knows she can't do it alone. It's going to take a lot of work and help from old and new friends to make a difference, but Stella Diaz never gives up. All right, so like I said, I'm going to read. Here's a... Apparently there is a dog in the story this, this time. I don't think Stella has a dog. Stella has a fish, I think, right? If I remember correctly. All right, so here we go. Like I said, we'll do probably three chapters or uh, 15 minutes. Chapter one. Look, turtles, right? Stella loves marine animals. Chapter one. It's been 11 days and summer is already a slow crawl. Everyone strolls around like they're floating on an inner tube on a lazy river. No school means there is nowhere I have to be. You can relate, right? There's a connection. We are all stuck at home. We don't have no place that we need to be right now. This can be awesome. Some days I ride my bike for hours with my best friend Jenny or go swimming with my big brother Nick. Unfortunately, on most days, the only place I am is stuck at home, just like us. I've got my work cut out for me. It's going to be hard not to be bored. Today, I begin by searching the house. I want to find my own mystery caper. It'll mean a new adventure for me, and then I'd have to spend the entire summer solving it. At least, that's what happens on Nancy Drew. So Nancy Drew was a young teenage detective in uh, books many years ago. I find a few fun things like Journey to the Center of the Earth in Espanol, which means Spanish. A book can be an adventure, but the Spanish is too hard for me. I'll read it when I'm older, I say to myself as I put the book aside. In my mom's bedroom, I find a ring tucked away in the bottom drawer of her jewelry box. Maybe it's the ring from Lord of the Rings. Then I read the inscription inside. In cursive script, it reads, now this is in Spanish, so give me a break. Para mi guerra. Guerra is dad's nickname from my mom since she has light brown hair. No mystery here. It's mom's wedding ring that she no longer wears since the divorce. I spy around mom's closet next, zero luck, but seeing mom's business attire, which means her clothes that she wears for work, reminds me of how occupada she is at work. All I know is if mom were here with me during the day, summer would be more fun and there would be more yummy albondigas. Mom's meatballs are guaranteed to make any situation better. And here is Stella trying on her mom's clothes. The last place to explore is my big brother's room. As I approach his room, Nick stops me. Off limits, he says. Then he walks toward the front entrance of the house. I'm heading to work, sis. Be nice to Linda. She'll be here in a minute. Not exploring Nick's room doesn't really bother me too much. I'd rather discover some secret compartments, not boy stuff. With my snooping at an end, I head back to my room. Time for another brainstorming session. Hopefully Jenny can help me brainstorm later when she's not at dance camp. Then again, if she were here with me now, I wouldn't need to think of fun things to do. Then I look over at Pancho, my beta fish. I know what to do. Time for Plan B. And here we go. Chapter 2. Plan B. Now, Plan B is not bad at all. It's actually great. My plan is to continue what I started in Ms. Bell's class and continue to study as much marine life as possible. I'm hooked. 
Like Jacques Cousteau said, the sea, once it casts its spell, holds one in its net of wonder forever. Jacques Cousteau is a very famous marine biologist. Scientists predict that we've only seen 5% of the ocean floor. It makes sense, since they are miles deep and cover 71% of the Earth. I'll need to know more about the oceans, too, if I'm able to go to the Shed Aquarium summer camp. Mom helped me apply a little while ago, but we haven't heard anything yet. I even included with my application a persuasive essay on how I wanted to be the next Jacques Cousteau. To top it off, I attached pictures of my animal project from Ms. Bell's class. I really hope that I'm accepted into the summer camp. This way, I'll be doing something memorable this summer, just like everyone else I know. Like Jenny has her dance camp, she is even going to have a big recital. One of the biggest in town, she says. Then, Nick has his first job. It's only part-time, but he gets a paycheck like an adult. Mom is so proud of him. She wanted to frame his first paycheck, but Nick said no. He wanted to keep the money more. I want to make Mom proud of me, too, but I can't get a job. I'm too young to work. All I know is if I don't have a project or adventure of my own, my summer will be boring with a capital B. I'll also fall behind everyone else. I'm determined to turn things around, so I get to work. I sprawl out on the rug in the center of the living room and start on my project. As I draw, I hear the, draw, I hear the front door open. Then I feel a gentle lick on my hand. A pint-sized slobber comes from Biscuit, my n n neighbor Linda's chihuahua. There he is, look. Came up on her when she's doing some work on the floor. He is brown and white with legs as wide as my thumb. Biscuit and Linda stay with me twice a week in the afternoons whenever Nick is at his summer job. Hi, Stella, Linda yells, shutting the front door. Is Biscuit bothering you? I shake my head. I think he just wants to see my drawing, I reply. I like Biscuit because he is curious about everything. He often crawls from Linda's backyard through a tiny hole in our fence into our backyard. That's how we were first introduced to Biscuit and then Linda when she came to get him. What fish are you drawing today, Linda asks. A long-nosed butterfly fish. Did you know their design helps them blend into the coral reefs? I did not, she replies. Thank you for teaching me a new fact. I pause. Linda, would you consider that a conversation starter? Ha, she chuckles. You know, I just might. A conversation starter is what mom calls a fun fact you can share when you're chatting with a new friend. I'm collecting them in my composition book for when I start fourth grade at the end of the summer. It'll help if I'm feeling quiet, although I may not even need them, especially after what happened last school year with my new friend, Stanley. Stanley is one of my newest friends. When I first met him, I thought no way he would want to be friends with me. He is extroverted and I can be shy. Not to mention, I acted like a total klutz in front of him on his very first day. Turns out, I was very wrong. We've got a bunch in common and now we're close buddies. Sadly, Stanley is gone for most of the summer on probably the most exciting adventure of everyone I know. He is in Texas visiting family and going to his own amazing summer camp, the NASA Space Camp. He is going to be a junior space explorer for a whole week. He's going to learn about gravity, program a robot, maybe even explore a space rocket. I'd rather explore the oceans than outer space. I get motion sickness, and those rockets shooting out in space make me queasy. <clears throat> but there is no denying that Stanley is going to have one of the coolest experiences known to humankind. Some of it would be definitely more exciting if Stanley weren't away. If Stanley were here, he'd be learning about marine animals with me. He loves the aquarium almost as much as I do. Instead, he's having an epic adventure while I'm just sitting here at home. He promised to email me with his dad's email account, but I'm afraid he's going to be too busy to remember. I sigh and look at my drawing. If only I could do something big this summer, too. <clears throat> chapter 3. Look, more turtles. I think that's going to be the official signal that it's a new chapter. As the afternoon progresses, I move on from drawing to reading. The book I'm reading now is the greatest. It's from the library, and it's about Sylvia Earle. She's a marine biologist and the first female chief scientist for the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Lately, she's been working to save the oceans through her organization, Mission Blue. Reading about her makes me think that girls like me can accomplish big things. I close my eyes and daydream of exploring the ocean when I hear jingle, jingle, clackety, clack. Ah, I perk up. The sound of keys and high heels alerts me and lets me know Mom is home. I run toward her. Hi, Perla, Linda says to Mom from the other room. It's always weird hearing people call my mom by her first name. Hi, Linda. Looks like you're finishing another fabulous project. Linda smiles as she holds up a chihuahua-sized sweater that she is knitting. Mom wraps her arm around my shoulder. Hola, mi inteligentissima hija, Mom says. What amazing things did you learn today? 
So much, I think. But then I remember the absolute most fascinating thing. I grabbed my other book and flipped to a page. Did you know there was a volcano in Antarctica? Wow. It's on Deception Island, I say, pointing to the picture of a black volcano surrounded by icy blue glaciers. Increíble. You know, talk of Antarctica puts me in the mood for ice cream. Want to go, mi amor? The day certainly is becoming more exciting now that Mom is home. As Linda grabs her tote bag in one hand and biscuit in the other to leave, Mom asks her, Linda, would you like us to bring you anything from Oberweiss? Mom tried a few times to pay Linda for babysitting me twice a week, but Linda always refuses. She says, that's because she loves my company, and that's payment enough. Still, Mom insists on giving her a little something each time. One scoop of vanilla with a cake cone on the side, please. Biscuit just loves a bite of the cone. Biscuit barks. I can't tell if it's because Linda said his name or if he really wants cake. Either way, the wiggle of his tail, he looks delighted. Mom changes quickly into her comfy clothes, and we head to our local ice cream shop. And look, here they are. There's Biscuit having a little nibble on the cone, and there is Stella Diaz and Mom coming home. What ice cream flavor are you going to get today, I ask Mom, as we walk down the street. I'm practically skipping. With her being so busy at work, it feels like a special treat to be able to hang out with her. No say. I need some inspiration. I think no say must mean I don't know. Mom insists inspiration is important. It's what gives you an idea or sparks your imagination. Right? Like mine spark. For mom, inspiration at Oberweiss comes from sampling a few flavors. Right after I order my favorite lime sherbet with nuts, mom is immediately inspired. Nuts. I don't like nuts on my ice cream. After one look at cappuccino chocolate chunk, she is convinced. I'm digging a giant spoonful of lime sherbet when mom says, I've got some exciting news for me estrellita. Uh, I'm not sure what that one is. An email. My eyes grow big. Stanley? Mom shakes her head. No, but still very exciting. We heard back. Ooh, this must be the summer camp. I interrupt her. <gasps> is this what I think it is? She nods. You've been accepted into the Shed Aquarium summer camp. I almost drop my ice cream as I squeeze mom with both arms. When does it start? It's not too much money? My mind is filled with questions. A little over a month from now, and not at all. Especially since I saved up for it. Whew, I exhale. I'm so proud of you, Stella, she says, patting my head. I grin. Mom is proud of me, just like she is of Nick. Better yet, I finally have my own adventure for this summer. All right, that's three chapters. Two turtles and another chapter next. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Go outside and play.